Hey guys, today I'm here with the Addictive Desert Designs Honey Badger Winch Front Bumper, fitting all 2016 to 2019 Toyota Tacomas. So this will be perfect for that Tacoma owner who's looking for a high quality front bumper that's gonna add a ton of functionality and style to the front end of their truck. This will provide full front end coverage and wrap around the sides, meshing really well with the body lines and the fenders, but this is gonna provide full front end coverage and it's gonna be able to take a hit with the heavy duty construction perfect for somebody who's looking for a strong front bumper that's going to provide that extra protection to the front end of their truck. Not to mention with the compact design, this is going to allow for a ton of clearance in the front and help out with your approach angles because of these angled up ends, making this perfect for somebody who's looking for a front bumper that's going to help out their off-road performance. Speaking of that performance, this will also incorporate utility into the design with the recovery points, the winch plate, and all of the light mounting options. Now what I really like about this is the fact that this is going to have universal mounting options and come with all of the brackets that you need to do so, so you can really customize this to how you want it to be and make your Tacoma stand out. Like I mentioned, this will be a high quality front bumper. There is a lot of thought put into the design and this is going to be made of high quality materials, so it is going to be a little bit more expensive than the average front bumper coming in at roughly $1,500. Now I personally think that that's a very fair price considering what this bumper comes with or what this bumper is going to offer you. This has a very clean fitment even though you do have to do a little bit of cutting you can customize this to however you want and this is going to last a very long time. In comparison to some other options on the page this is going to have a very sleek and compact design. Some other choices for front bumpers may be a little bit boxier which will provide some more protection to the front end however this is going to provide you more clearance. So if you are concerned about your approach angles you're looking for something sleek and it's gonna last a very long time while still being able to customize it to your own, then this is a really good choice to take a look at. Install is gonna be a two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter, and we will have to do a decent amount of cutting to fit this on and get the correct fitment. But other than that, you're gonna need some very basic hand tools. So speaking of the install, let's jump into that now. The tools that I used for my install were an impact wrench, a bungee cord, roll bar and chassis paint, a marker, a measuring tape, safety glasses, painter's tape, a pair of needle nose pliers, flathead screwdriver, a trim removal tool, a panel removal tool, a cutoff wheel, a 12 millimeter ratcheting wrench, a 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter, 14 millimeter, and 17 millimeter deep socket, a three inch extension, a 732nd inch Allen key, a quarter inch drive ratchet, and a 3 8 inch drive ratchet. Our first step is to head underneath our bumper so we can remove our splash guard as well as our lower bumper bolt. You're going to need a 10 millimeter socket and an impact wrench or a ratchet as well as something comfy to lay on. On our splash guard on either side we're going to have two bolts in the rear. I'm going to take a 10 millimeter socket and remove those. After the rear ones are removed we can head towards the front and remove the bolts that are lining the front of our splash guard. These are also going to be a 10 millimeter socket. And just like the first two bolts, the last two are going to be in the back of the splash guard. After that last bolt is removed, the splash guard should just pop off. Next, we can remove our skid plate by removing the four 12 millimeter bolts around our skid plate. After those four bolts are removed, we can unhook it from the frame and wiggle it off. So now with a 10 millimeter socket, we can start to remove the actual bumper bolts. These are going to be different from the splash guard bolts. So 
So what we can do next is disconnect this bolt that's connected to our fender here. We are gonna have to pull this out and away from our bumper. And we also wanna disconnect this clip here, which is gonna allow us to pull our inner fender liner back so we can access our fog light. I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter socket for the bolt. And then a flathead screwdriver for the clip. You may need a handle removal tool or a trim removal tool to remove this. After the bottom bolt and clip are removed, there are two more bolts up at this fender that we need to remove. And I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter socket to do so. So what we can do is remove this pin on the inside. This is gonna help us wedge our fender liner back. And then we can start to pry on our inner fender liner. So now that we've pulled the fender liner back enough, what we can do is depress the clip and wiggle out the fog light connector. After we've finished on the driver's side, we can repeat the same process on the passenger side. Our next step is to pull our fender away from the body and our bumper here. This is gonna consist of a number of different clips. We don't necessarily need to take off the whole fender. You can if you want to, but you don't need to. Um, and that would require a couple more 10 millimeter bolts on the back. But I am going to take the trim removal tool that we've been using and pull this and kind of give it a good tug to separate it from the bumper and the body. So in order to pull this back a little bit more, what I'm gonna do is just take a 10 millimeter socket and remove the bolts that are holding on the back of our fender. So after our fender is disconnected, we can do the same thing on the other side. So what we need to do now is measure where we need to cut. So we're going to focus on this body line here right above our fog light. We need to measure two and seven eighths of an inch down from that body line. So I just have a marker here. I am just going to make a little mark just for my reference. And then what we can do is tape that off. What I'm gonna do is try to get a straight enough line all the way across here, and we are going to tape it all the way over to that junction from the bumper and the fender where that meets at the corner. Now over here, as you can tell, this is where our junction is gonna be. I am going to take the tape and just create a solid line over to that junction. is start to remove this trim piece before we cut. And that's gonna prevent us from hitting this outer trim piece and give us a more precise cut. So what we're gonna do at this point is grab a cutoff wheel as well as a pair of safety glasses and cut a quarter inch down from where we made our mark. This is gonna leave us a little bit of room in the future for extra adjustment. We wanna make sure that we don't cut off too much material from our bumper, and that's gonna allow us to do that. So I have a cutoff wheel here, as well as a pair of safety glasses. Make sure you wear those. And then we're gonna cut a quarter inch down. So 
So after we're done cutting over on the driver's side, we can repeat the same process on the passenger side. Now that we've cut our actual bumper, what we need to do is separate this fog light bracket or housing, which is a part of the bumper, from this top part of the bumper. So there's a little tab up at the top that we just need to continue to cut through, and then we can do the same thing on the other side and pull our bumper off. So our next step is just to pull our bumper off, give it a little bit of pressure, and it should just pop right off. So our fog lights do have a clip on either side. I'm gonna grab a trim removal tool, and we can just pop those off, and that should fully release our bumper. So after both of those are removed, we can pull our front bumper off. Before we continue to take apart the front end of our Tacoma, I wanted to stop down and tell you guys a little bit more about this new ADD front bumper, especially in comparison to the factory setup. This is going to be a lot more durable considering that your factory front bumper is made of a plastic material. You will on the front bumper or the front end of your Tacoma have an impact dampener as well as a steel crash bar in the back. However, if you do take a hit to your factory front bumper. This is made of a plastic material, so it is going to bend, break, or even get damaged. But when moving over to this ADD front bumper or an aftermarket front bumper, it is going to be a lot more durable. So the specific bumper by ADD is going to be made of a 1 8 inch thick steel material, which will be a thicker material and compared to some other aftermarket options and will really be able to take a hit when you are off road or even when you are out on the street. This will also have aluminum panels on the side that are removable for light mounting options. And this is all going to be covered in a hammer coat black powder coat finish which will protect the steel underneath from any rust and the aluminum panels are going to be covered in a gloss black finish which will prevent the aluminum from corroding but altogether it's going to add a nice contrast and add a lot of style and aggressiveness to the front end of your Tacoma. This will also have a couple of different features integrated into the design. You will have a skid plate underneath that will integrate into your factory skid plate giving you a bit of extra protection underneath and this will also have high angled sides which will provide you a lot of clearance when you're out on the trail or again just even driving around on the street. The factory option will have an angled up side but not as much as this so if you are concerned about your approach angles this is a really good bumper to take a look at. This will also come with a couple of different options for utility as well as versatility. So like I mentioned before this will have light mounting options on each of the side panels you will be able to mount up a 10 inch light bar on either Either side and in the middle you're gonna have multiple mounting points either for a light bar or just singular cube options but what I do really like about this considering that all of the light mounting options are universal is that you can customize this to your own liking and you can set this up however you want now you're also getting a couple of different options for utility including the three-quarter inch d-ring mounts right on the front and this is gonna be perfect for any recovery situations as well as a winch plate on the back that will will offer a couple of different mounting options and some adjustability within that. So this is going to provide a lot more than your factory front bumper would, considering that there's not really much going on. The only thing is we're not gonna be able to switch over the factory fog lights, but with all of the light mounting options, I personally think that that is a fair trade-off. So enough about these two side by side, let's continue with our uninstall. So our next step is to remove our impact dampener. All we have to do is give it a good tug. This is held on by a couple of clips. There's gonna be a couple of tabs that you may have to depress in order to get out. And it'll kind of be staggered along the bumper. You can put that to the side. So what we're gonna do is remove the three nuts on the studs that are holding on our crash bar. I'm gonna use a 14 millimeter deep socket as well as an extension to reach the back of this crash bar here.
So there is a supporting arm here that attaches to our fender liner. What I'm gonna do is take a pair of needle nose pliers, pinch this clip here together so we can remove this from the supporting arm. We can do the same thing on the other side. And then we can remove this crash bar. Next, we can remove our mounting hardware. This is gonna be three studs on either side as well as three 14 millimeter nuts. So I'm gonna use that same 14 millimeter socket. I'm also using a three inch extension to give myself some room. So next what we can do is remove our tow hook or our recovery hook here. This is going to be a little bit different than other models. Some models may have an actual hook that is here. There are gonna be two 17 millimeter bolts that we have to remove because this needs to be out of the way for our skid plate underneath. I'm gonna take a 17 millimeter socket and remove both of those bolts. After those are removed, we're also going to remove our bumper extension or our frame extension over on the side here. This is going to be the same for the other side as well, and there's going to be one 17 millimeter bolt holding it in. So we can remove that and slide that out. And repeat that frame extension part on the other side. What we can do next is remove our cross members underneath. These are going to look a little bit different, but basically they're from the cross member in the back up to the frame in the front or the cross frame in the front. And there are gonna be three 17 millimeter bolts holding each of those in. I'm gonna take that same 17 millimeter socket that we just used and remove those. Now you wanna make sure that you save these bolts because we will be reinstalling these. We just need to take them out for the meantime. Driver's side's gonna be a little bit different. You're gonna have two bolts in the front and one in the back. Now we can move back up to the front of our truck. So what we need to do next is cut this tow hook Flush. So this is welded onto our cross member here. So what we're gonna have to do is actually cut this part off, but I don't wanna hit our power steering cooler here and we have to relocate it in just a minute anyway. So what I'm gonna do is take a 12 millimeter socket and remove the two bolts that are holding this to our cross member. So once we remove those bolts, this will wiggle out of place. What I'm gonna do is hang this actually from our radiator support or radiator support and kind of get it out of the way so we don't end up cutting this line once we are cutting off of our hook. So you just wanna make sure that you're careful with the fins and then what I'm gonna do is just hook this out of the way any place that I can. Bungee cord should do the job. And then once that's out of the way, we'll have full room to move with our tow hook here. Now I'm gonna take my cutoff wheel and start cutting this hook off. Make sure you're wearing your safety glasses for this. So after we've cut the hook off, we don't want to leave any bare metal exposed. So I'm going to hit this with a little bit of chassis paint and then we can move on to our next step. 
So what we can do now is relocate our power steering cooling system here. So I'm going to unhook this from where we were hanging it on the bungee, making sure that I'm careful with the fins. Get that out of the way. And then we can attach our relocation bracket. So it's just going to be a very simple bracket. The front bolt is going to be our factory bolt and we're just going to put that in the factory location. And then we're gonna relocate the whole cooling system back farther so it clears the bumper, considering that this part comes out a little farther and we wanna keep it protected behind the bumper. And it's basically gonna mount like that. So this is just going to be the factory bolt. We can move this up again and tighten this down with that 12 millimeter socket that we originally took it out with. We don't want to completely tighten it down just because we want to be able to line everything up. We're going to have a provided Allen head bolt that we'll put through the top, down through the bottom and threaded nut. Then we can take a 7 32nd inch Allen key. I have an Allen socket and then tighten that up with a 9 16 inch socket on the bottom. So we can tighten this up with our 12 millimeter ratcheting wrench considering it's a little bit more profile. And then after this is completely tightened, we can move on to our next step. So what I'm gonna do next is hold our inner fender liner in place. We are going to trim this, but I want to mark where we need to trim. So we're gonna go along with our body line here, but I'm just gonna make a faint line just so we have a reference point. So you can use a utility knife for this. However, since we are already using our cutoff wheel, I find it a little bit easier and quicker to do it that way. You also wanna make sure that there is nothing behind the actual liner before you are cutting, no wiring harnesses or anything. So, looks like we're good to go. So after we're finished on one side, we can do the same thing on the other. So what we can do next is tape off our fender and trim this piece of our fender off. Now we are gonna keep that quarter inch gap just for fitment purposes. So when we mount up our front bumper in just a minute, we can figure out what the best fitment is. So with the cutoff wheel, I'm just going to cut a quarter inch down from our tape here. And you also wanna make sure that it's just straight across. There's no angle or anything. We just want this to sit flush with our new front bumper. Is that fairly good? We can pull that back out, do the same thing for the other side. So our next step is to mount it up. Now you want to mock it up first, make sure that it's going to fit with all of your trimming. And if it does, we can bolt it down with the provided nuts. So if it fits, what we can do is bolt it down with the factory hardware. Those are the 14 millimeter nuts that we removed before. We're gonna loosely thread these on, and as you can tell in the bumper itself, it does have adjustability. From what I'm seeing up top, we will need to move it up a little bit farther and then tighten it down completely.
So now that we have tightened down the outer nuts, what we can do is tighten down the inner one. This is going to be in the inside of our bumper here. So we can tighten it down with that same 14 millimeter deep socket. Same thing for the other side. So what we can do is reinstall our subframe using our factory bolts. So right now our subframe or our cross members are not sitting flush because of these two tabs and the one tab on the other side. I'm just going to trim these to make sure that they are sitting correctly up against the bumper. So again, I'm going to take my cutoff wheel, just do a slight trim. So now those sit flush and we can tighten them up with the 17 millimeter deep socket. Same thing for the other one. That's going to wrap it up for my review and install. Make sure you like and subscribe. And for more videos and products like this, always keep it right here at ExtremeTerrain.com.